Hey everyone, welcome back to the Armory. Robots have always been on the cutting edge of technology. As computer power and accuracy and flexi... Back up. As all those things improve, robots can keep being used in more and more applications. So, they're now becoming the perfect tool for surgeons to be able to use in the operating room. Some manufacturers even have specific arms exactly dedicated for this application. Hey everyone, this is Eva from KUKA Robotics. Today, I'm gonna to be setting up Eva to be able to do surgery. Do you remember that game Operation? It was made in the 80s. I'm pretty sure it still exists. I remember the ads from when I was a kid. Go to pieces and collect your feet, but don't touch the sides. I'm the doctor for you. Operation. Since you're apparently not supposed to do surgery on your children or your pets, I think this is probably more our speed. Now, for those who've never played this before, you have these tweezers. You, there's a bunch of spots with little objects in them and you use your tweezers to go in and try to pull out the objects. If you hit the side, the whole board, board vibrates and lights up and let you know that you screwed up. What we're gonna do is give a gripper to Eva with tiny little tweezers that are wired into the board and see if Eva can actually pull out the little pieces. Like the dinner date robot, I suspect the biggest issue we're gonna have here is vision, is actually being able to see what we're doing well enough to be able to do it. So hopefully more cameras that are positioned better will go a long way to fix that. Just like when we did the Lego Unicorn project, having custom fingertips that match the application is super important. Using this Robotique gripper, it's really easy to design and 3D print new fingertips that work perfectly for what you're trying to do. I took some old tweezers that we weren't using and sanded them down so that they were conductive on all sides. And I embedded them inside the tips that I printed. This extra screw is just a hard stop to make sure that I can control exactly how far the gripper closes. Those wires wrap around the screws that are connected to the tweezers and they'll run all the way back down the arm and to the board. This is a minor note, but I'm very happy that arms of this size all seem to have the same bolt pattern on the end. KUKA, FANUC, UR, they all have the exact same bolt pattern, which is lovely. I'm hoping putting a camera right on the end of the gripper will give me a really good view of the end of the tweezers. Using this collaborative gripper is perfect for an application like this. You can control how quickly and how far the tweezers open and close, as well as how much force they use, which is perfect for these really small pieces. All of the software is done in ROS. ROS is just a framework that makes it super easy to combine a whole bunch of different software pieces together, and they all talk the same language. All of the code for this is gonna be on GitHub, just like all my other projects. To control the arm, I'm using a software called Move It. It's super easy to control the arm, but also calculate full paths that the arm will move without hitting anything. The software is constantly doing collision detection with the environment and making sure that any motion it does is a safe motion, even in between the two endpoints. We're all set up now and ready to play. I was trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to play this game, but then I realized that if I'm playing it solo, you're just watching a grown man on the internet playing with himself, and nobody wants to see that. So, what I figured I would do is actually hook it up to a Twitch live stream. So Twitch is a website where people normally stream themselves playing video games and viewers can watch and talk and give feedback. What we're gonna do instead is stream the game and have the robot watch what's happening inside of Twitch and accept commands from the Twitch chat. So as people are sending messages, the robot is reading those messages and will be doing whatever the internet tells it to do, right or wrong. I wrote a simple chatbot inside of Ross that pulls data out of the chat live. The bot will look for known commands and keep tabs on how many there are and treat them as votes. After a while, it will see which command has been voted for the most, and then it will tell all of the other software inside of Ross to run that command. One big benefit of ROS is that there's a lot of libraries that already exist, 
so you don't need to write a driver for every single arm you're working with. I announced the live stream to all my patrons on Patreon. If you're interested in that and want to support the channel, head on over there and have a look. I also announced it on Instagram. I don't know if I'm going to do that again, but if you want to keep an eye on what the channel's up to in between videos, make sure to follow me there. Looks like the internet is starting with ankle bone connected to the knee bone. That rubber band is flexible, so I don't know if that'll be easier or harder. There's the first buzz hitting the edge. When the robot hits the edge, it will open the gripper and then retract straight up and out along the tool. All of the motions that the arm is doing is all just discrete jumps or steps. And that's just because there was enough of a delay in the stream that there was no reasonable way that the internet could actually control it smoothly. The robot's got the elastic band and it slipped off. There you go, looks like the internet got it. Just dumping the elastic away. Next up, trying wishbone. Having a hard time getting in there, the very tight fit. Looks like the internet is moving on to bread basket. It is a much larger hole, so hopefully it's easier to get in there with the tweezers. Looks like they actually got it first try. Being able to open the tweezers a really specific amount seems to really be helping here. Lots of small movements, but they were able to get it out. I had a lot of fun doing this experiment. I wanted to have the internet run a robot live for a while. There's a lot of challenges and risks in doing something like that, but it actually worked out pretty well. If you like this kind of stuff, head on over to Patreon and check out what we have going on over there. It really supports the channel and patrons get direct access to any sort of live stream or testing that I'm doing along the way. If you don't wanna support us on Patreon, maybe just hit subscribe. That goes a really, really long way and you get notified of the carnage once the video actually goes up. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Eva's currently on loan from ClearPath Robotics. They integrate arms and a whole bunch of other stuff with their mobile platforms for doing research. If you're looking for anything like that, make sure to reach out to them. Yes, it is pronounced Instagram.